So uh, here's just a quick video from Montreal that I wanted to show you guys. I'm from Canada. Uh, this was like a, a video that I'm just using to waste time while people get into the room. It's after lunch. Uh, kind of was a little slippery in the first big snow. I don't know. Did anyone see this before on the internet? You might have seen it. You can watch it. Uh, I think it's funny. Uh, you can see his tires are blocked. The hill's not very steep, but it was quite slippery. And then we'll start. Yeah, but it gets, it gets better. Watch, watch what happens. The, I was not driving, just for the record. This is not me driving. Is it your video? Or is it from the internet? It's from the internet. Uh, I was one of the first people to post it on the internet. This is the police who is uh, also sliding. <laughs> And then the, the truck comes to to put the ice, the salt, and <laughs> he's gonna plow the cop. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that's some stuff. Uh, I'm James. I like to try and do some magic to wake people up. You all went, whoa, you started paying attention. Um, all right, just stand for it. Sometimes after lunch, you have a big meal and you're kind of tired. So, um, anyways, uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to talk pretty quickly. Who does not speak English? Good. You obviously understand that if you don't speak English, so we're going to carry on. Uh, I work for Red Hat. It's a small Linux company. Uh, I go by Purple ID on the internet. I showed you this video. Um, I'm a hacker. I'm going to sit down. I hope you don't mind, just because uh, I have some demos and some typing to do. Is this on? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Don't be shy. If you're shy, just raise your hand so I know where you are. <laughs> Anybody who's really shy? Okay, good. Uh, so I write a technical blog of James. Um, who's seen the blog? Just raise your hand so I know. If you haven't read the blog, just raise your hand anyway so I seem really popular. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm actually a physiologist by training. Uh, so I'd like to talk about cardiology, but we'll have to wait till after. And I'm really into DevOps, so uh, really thank you for the organizers for having me. Um, some of you might have seen some of my previous puppet work that I used to do. Um, you might not hear the sound, it's just beaker screaming because everything's on fire. Um, I did a lot of puppet stuff back in the day. I started hacking around 0.24 sort with puppet. I think I got fairly good at it. Um, and I really wanted to push further because I wanted to have really some autonomous systems, some really powerful automation that you set up, you tell it what it wants to do, and it acts kind of like as a system in for you. Um, gave this material, I ended up building some really outrageous hacks in Puppet. So it turns out you can do recursion in Puppet. Does anyone know this? Don't be shy if you have something to scream out. Um, you probably don't want to do this, this is just playing around. Uh, you can build this thing in Puppet where you run Puppet, and then you have an exec which forks off a Python process which double forks so it gets away from the controlling puppet, waits for that parent puppet process to exit, and then spawns off a new puppet run if you want to run puppet multiple times uh, really quickly. Uh, you can do the same sort of thing with a timer where it does the same sort of forking operation, waits 30 minutes for say some big cluster operation to happen or DRBD to config, uh, converge or something like that and then runs again. And you can even build finite state machines in Puppet, which is, uh, again, something you may or may not want to do, um, but just playing around with it works. These work really, really slow in Puppet, so a bit of a problem. So um, eventually, I sat down and I was like, is this the right thing to do? Like, do I really want these hacks in Puppet? Because I wanted to build more powerful things, and I needed some more functionality, um, but I wasn't quite sure if this was correct. So what do you guys think, those, those hacks, these things? Yeah? So is this the right way? Uh, here's my guy. And he's the nope guy. No sound effects. You can make your own sound effects already. So anyways, long story short, I sat down and just basically tried to build what I thought was the correct design. And so now we have a project called MGMT and we have a logo and all this shit and we have stickers. So if you really want a sticker and you're going to use it, come see me afterwards. Um, I really want to talk about this stuff and I'm going to show you some demos. Do you want to see some demos? Yeah. Okay. There's some community stuff, which I'll show you later. But the, the main three points about the tool is in comparison with something like Puppet. Who's not familiar with Puppet, just for the record? 
Okay, done a little puppet. You know a bit of config management, so I'm assuming a bit of config management knowledge. Um, and in comparison with those tools, uh, we have a graph as well, a DAG, and it runs in parallel. Each resource is event-driven, which I'll also show you, and the whole thing works as a distributed system, which I'm also gonna demo for you guys. So we're gonna go through these three one at a time, okay? So here's a graph. Um, can everyone see this okay, with the red arrow? So each box um, is basically represents a resource, so a unit of work that you're gonna do in MGMT. Um, or you know some other system like Puppet. And the black arrows here actually represent the dependencies. So one has to happen before two, four has to be happen before five, and so on. And what most, or pretty much all tools do, is they do something called a topological sort. So if you look very closely, there's this red arrow here, which just says, okay, I'm gonna do, go through the graph like this, four, then five, six, and then seven. Make sense? But if you think about this, I know you guys are smart enough to realize this, everything on the left can actually run at the same time as everything on the right, because there's no dependencies between those two. So um, you can do that in MGMT, and in fact, once 1A has finished running, 2A and 2B can both run in parallel, and then once they're both finished, 3A will run. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you want to see a demo of this? Yeah. Come on, wake up. Do you want to see a demo of this? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you, okay. So I'm gonna show you, I'll show you this graph, okay? So here's a graph, each of these operations here is gonna take 10 seconds, so 10 seconds for some installation, some other operation, and so on, doesn't really matter. This over here is gonna take 15 seconds. So how long would this graph take to run? 30 seconds, right. So I just built a new copy, let me just double check, make you a new copy. I'm gonna show you that same graph, and what I'm gonna do is, MGMT runs continuously, so after it's finished, once it's finished, uh, excuse me, once it is finished converging, I can ask it to shut down if nothing happens for a certain number of seconds. So I'm gonna run this graph, and if nothing happens for five seconds, I'm gonna ask it to shut down. So 30 seconds plus five, minutes of, uh, five seconds of waiting gives us, come on, call it out, 35 seconds. Right. Okay, so let's just run this. Is that big enough? Can you see? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna run it, it's gonna start up. It happens very quickly. You see right here this 10 second operation and the 15 second option, uh, both start running right away, okay? eight, nine, 10 seconds go by, you'll see that first thing stopped and the 10 second thing after started running. Five seconds later, you see that 15 second long operation finished down here at the bottom. Five more seconds go by, that 10 second thing finished. We have that last bubble here at the bottom running here. That's gonna take 10 seconds. Eight, nine, 10 about. Perfect, that finished. Now if nothing happens for five seconds, it should shut down, we see. There we go. So the whole thing finished shutting down and the whole thing took about 36 seconds. So there's about one second of overhead to start up and do stuff. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So uh, just to prove that it actually runs in parallel, this turns out to actually could be quite helpful when you have long running operations and different things in a sort of next generation of automation. So uh, that's that. So uh, current tools that you're probably aware of are um, basically run every 30 minutes or pull, right? So when you run uh, Puppet, it'll run every 30 minutes, check the state, 30 minutes later, check the state again, fix it. But the problem is if you wanna change your configuration in between those runs, you have to wait until the next run. Or if something on your server changes, you're not gonna know until your 30 minute run starts happening. All right? So we actually are event based. So that means that everything we actually respond in real time and can fix. So um, I'll give you a demo of this because it is a lot clearer. I'm just gonna go over here. Okay, I'm gonna make a directory. Is that big enough? So on the right, I just have, this is all running on a single machine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask MGMT to, to create three files on my system. Now we don't have the language for MGMT yet. This is something we haven't built yet, but the moment we just have a raw data structure which we can ask MGMT to run. So this is just, it's still in development and we're not finished. And if you look in this data structure, you can see it happens to be YAML and I ask file F1, F2, and F3 to be created and have contents I'm F1, I'm F2, and I'm F3. Make sense? Yes? Don't be shy. Um, file F4 here says, please make sure this file does not exist. So I'm just gonna run this graph, and oops. And you'll see it starts up on the left, and then as quickly as I can go over here to the right, you see three files got created. Cool? You can actually cat the files, so you'll actually see they have the contents that I promised. Um, and the cool thing is if you remove F2 and you list, you see the file came right back. Okay? So you remove F2, and MGMT, you saw it notice that it was paying attention for things like that to change, and it came right back. But it's really quite fast, so you can actually remove F2 and cat F2, and as fast, before it even runs the second part of the operation, it comes right back, right? It's really, really very efficient uh, tool. In fact, it works so quickly, I can run this watch command, 
which if you don't know, it's just a little program that runs something over and over again as fast as it can. So as fast as I ask it to delete it, you'll see that MGMT on the left is actually running, waking up, and fixing the state in real time. Cool? Do you get the idea? Yep. So we're continuously ensuring the state, and in fact, this is very, very efficient to do. The other thing is when we have a new run, sort of a new puppet run, it doesn't have to recheck everything because we know the state. Um, you can obviously do things like echo hey in control and F2 and cat F2 and same sort of thing, right? It will always fix the state really quickly. Uh, you can obviously uh, create file F4 and same thing, it'll disappear before you even create it. Cool? So if you want to troll your sysadmins by running this thing, uh, hey, I thought I put that file there, that sort of thing uh, is possible. Any quick questions before I go? You want to see some more? No? You want to see some more stuff? It's up to you. I'm here for you guys, so um, it's really up to you. So we do this for every kind of resource primitive in MGMT. Uh, we have files, we have services, which we can, you know, if someone crashes the service, we can restart it. Um, uh, exec operations, uh, package kits for installing packages, and even higher level resources like uh, virtual machines, we actually can manage declaratively in this way and ensure the state. And I'll show you that a bit later. Um, so I think this is what I call config management a next generation of config management. But I think this is also a bit of another technology as well. Um, does this feel like another technology in particular to anyone? Just scream it out. Don't be shy. You can scream it out in Italian too. Uh, no? Anyone? Um, I think this is a little bit like monitoring. Okay? So if you think about um, setting up your cluster of stuff, you want to set up all your automation, and then you have to actually then monitor everything to make sure that you know when something breaks. So if we can actually build in at the resource level this sort of event-based thing that knows when something changes, I think there'll be a lot less monitoring work that you actually have to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, it's not the main design goal, but I think it's a positive side effect once you have this event system. So um, that's what you get for free. Um, the third part I want to talk about is this distributed system. So um, basically in MGMT, uh, we work at a distributed system, but let's look at some um, traditional topologies first. So this is a topology where you have a server and a whole bunch of clients that go out and connect to the server. What's this called? What kind of topology is this? Don't be shy, come on. Yeah, it's client server, right? What's some of the problems with this topology? Single point of failure, what's another problem? Don't be shy. Scalability, right? If you have many, many clients, this can be a big problem. Um, here's a slightly different topology. Uh, this is where you have a central orchestrator, and this initiates connections to a bunch of machines. Um, this is what I talk about when we talk about orchestrators. Orchestrators, as far as I'm concerned, mean that single point that goes out. What's the problem with this topology? Single yeah, single point of failure, same as the first one. What's another problem with this topology? Yeah, scale as well, right? So same sort of things. They look quite similar, the arrows are just pointing in the wrong way. So here's what we don't do in MGMT. This is a pure peer topology where everyone connects to everyone else. This doesn't work uh, for a pretty obvious reason, which is that if you have a large number of peers, the connection count is just absurd. So what we actually do in MGMT is something that looks like this. So every um, machine or VM or whatever you want um, has a little agent, and it starts up and it runs, and they cluster together to pick some uh, core small number of machines, say in this case four in this diagram, that act as primary uh, machines in the cluster. And this is all done with a distributed algorithm called Raft. And these machines here, then in addition, um, they all communicate to each other, and everyone else just connects to any one of them to get information. And once we have this central core running, uh, we actually can run a distributed key value store on top of that. And we use something called etcd. And that actually gets compiled into the MGMT code base so the client and the server stuff. And the cool thing about this is if this machine goes down, no problem, we can automatically elect some new machine to join that cluster and take over. All right, do you wanna see an example of this? We're getting slightly more enthusiastic, yeah, so that's good. Um, the lunch was good, and uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a little example here. Um, so I'm just gonna create uh, five directories here, and uh, just to show you there's nothing in these directories. And I'm just going to run a little uh, watch. Oop. Uh. Oops. Just so you can see what's happening. So basically, I'm going to run a cluster of machines, but I'm going to all just run them on my laptop directly instead of a bunch of VMs because I don't have a lot of RAM. 
Um, and this is just going to simulate each directory on each machine, and you can sort of see what's happening in real time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each machine to perform the following algorithm. algorithm. Um, each machine is going to either create a resource on itself or put a resource in this database. Okay? And in this case, each machine is going to put one resource in the database and pull down all the resources that are there. Okay? Now, the reason we do this, I'm going to show you in a moment, but let's just run the first machine. So, just so you can actually see this running. So I'm going to start this up. Remember, it's going to put one file up in this database, this virtual resource, and then pull everything down and create it. So how many files should you see on the right? If you put one up and then pull one down, just the one, right? So let's just start this up. You'll see very quickly it starts up and it creates that one file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a second machine, and we're going to see what happens. Okay? So I have here... Now all you do, actually, if you want to see what this command is, I'm just running MGMT. I'm pointing it at the, the data structure uh, that I want it to run. And I have a command here, you know, I tell it the host name just because I want to run more than one on the same machine, so I have to lie to it. And all I do is I point it at the IP address of any existing machine in the cluster, and it will just sort of grow out through the connection with everyone else. Now lastly, because I'm running everything locally, I have to pick different IP addresses so they don't conflict. And so that's what this stuff is here. Okay, so same pattern is going to happen. I'm going to put a second file in that database and then pull everything down. So how many files should I see on the second machine? Two, two. two, right? But the other thing is that first machine is watching that database and it now sees a second file. So it's going to now react instantly and pull a file down. So let's run that and see. So very quickly you get second two files and you'll see the first machine has a second file as well. Um, we can do this for a third machine. Undo it with a third machine. No? Yes? No? Okay, everyone, do you want to see a third machine? Yeah. All right, come on. Work with me, guys. Um, so, uh, third machine, how many files would we be expecting now? Three. Three. Counting with James. Very fun. So, very quickly, you see a third file. Now, what is the fundamental logical thing that we're doing? What we're actually doing here is imagine that one of these servers is a load balancer, and everyone else is a web server. Excuse me. What we actually do is we're actually starting up a new machine and it's saying, okay, I'm a machine, I'm a web server, I'm now available. And we export some information about that machine into this database. Now the load balancer is perhaps watching for web servers to route to. So as soon as it sees those things, it pulls down those rules and, you know, adds them to the load balancer. Uh, in this particular example, this is sort of like a meet and greet example. So if you want to know which machines are there, this is what we're doing. We're basically exchanging our name or our business card with everyone else in the room. So all these sort of distributed algorithms are things that were built into MGMT and make it really easy and fast to do. So that later on when you're building your clusters, you can build these things in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Close enough? Um, I have a lot of stuff to show you. We can actually add more machines and then kill one and have them take over. But I've actually already given a talk where I've showed that before and that's all recorded. And I'd rather show you some brand new stuff. So I'm going to move on, but if you have some time, have a look. I have a blog post about this, and there's a video that shows you much more. Does that sound fair? Okay. Cool? That's just the basic idea. So, and I'm just going to shut all this stuff down. Um, and, uh, yeah. At least we don't need. Just kill it fast. So, um, so that's basically the, the, the three primitives. And I have a really bad infographic of this in the slides. Um, some more stuff that I'm going to skip over. Uh, I'll try and come back to this stuff at the end if I have time, but I'd rather show you some new things. So, um, skipping ahead. Okay. Um, so one thing I want to tell you guys about. So this is all MGMT, so it's a new engine. Um, there's a guy who did some great work. Um, it turns out we can actually take existing puppet code and take it and run it on the MGMT engine. So this isn't finished, but this actually works. And the cool thing of that is you don't have to waste all your old puppet code. And you then have something that's now running way, way faster in parallel and event-based. So if you like this kind of idea, this is a project that uh, an upstream contributor uh, started and uh, works pretty, pretty well. Um, we have a whole bunch of uh, resources at MGMT, and I want to show you uh, some of the newer ones. So we have uh, right here, if I uh, run on my laptop, so I'm just listing the number of virtual machines locally. And you see there's this Fedora 18 machine, which is shut off. Um, we can actually run uh, this resource here, which actually declares the state of a virtual machine. So I'm going to run this, and you'll see very quickly, um, maybe it's a little big, it actually started up a brand new machine. So I declared, please give me one virtual machine, and MGMT started it up and it's now running. 
And the cool thing about this is it works like before, right? So if I were to actually just unplug the machine, you'll see MGMT notices and it starts it right up again. Same like with file. So now you can actually declaratively just say um, what virtual machines or containers or any kind of resource that you can think of on your machine. We have a vert resource, which is pretty good. We have a container resource, which is still a work in progress, and so on. So use your imagination about what kind of powerful, advanced resource uh, that you want to build, and we can build it, or you can build it in MGMT. Do you like that idea? So I want to show you a little bit uh, further. I'm going to just check out a feature branch. So just to make it entirely clear, um, everything that I'm showing you today, including all the demos, all the example files and everything, that's all on GitHub. It's all free software. You can download this all. You can try all these demos yourself at home. Nothing is proprietary, um, including this feature branch. Uh, whoops. Okay. So um, what I have here is I wanted to think about how higher level clusters should really work. Okay. So at some point, you might say build up a whole bunch of different resources and different clusters of machines, and you might want to have a higher level overview on how your whole architecture server-wide works. Okay? Um, and here's just a little prototype of this um, in a web UI. So uh, what I'm going to do, actually, I have to start up uh, Firefox. There goes my RAM. Um, uh, so there's this project called Cockpit, and um, Cockpit is uh, its actually started by a Red Hat guy, but it's a pretty good upstream. Um, my password is password if you're curious. And what Cockpit lets you does is Cockpit gives you a small, over, um, small little web UI that you can build on top of some existing engine. So in this case, I built a really shitty thing on top of MGMT. And what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm just going to start up MGMT here on the left. Okay? So MGMT is up and running. And over here, I'm going to run this verse list command. But I'm going to that, run that in a little watch loop so you can actually just see how many machines are actually running without me having to keep typing it. Make sense? Yep. Okay. And I'm just going to hide MGMT by putting this little web UI thing right here. So now, what I actually have is I've actually made a slider here. And as I slide this over up and down, that's the count of virtual machines that I want in my cluster. So I can click, uh, go here, click Save. And you'll see the engine notices the graph changes. And it starts up two machines. I can move this over to four, for example. Click Save. And if you can see here on the right, there's now four machines running. You can move this down to one, click Save, and it will shut down three of them for you. Now, this is just um, one example. Now, this is just one shitty slider and one crappy little web UI I made. But it's very easy for you to build something completely different. So this could be the replica count in your storage. Um, it could be you know, the load that you're expecting, so how many VMs you're running across your whole infrastructure. So if Michael Jackson is about to die, you could just slide this up and have more capacity available. Um, and, and here's what's actually happening. Every time I click Save, what actually happens is uh, this little thing pushes a brand new graph into MGMT. MGMT looks at the currently running graph and the new graph, and it does a very efficient diff between the two, and starts up the new graph. And that means, because it does this efficient diff, anything that changes, um, it needs to recheck. But existing things that haven't changed, it just skips right over, because it already knows the state. And I actually make this uh, a little bit more fun. I have this little live checkbox just to show you how efficient MGMT is. As I actually slide this in real time, you can see the VMs come up and start running. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and you'll actually just see that uh, it's very, very efficient. And it just makes these changes in real time. So you can just see it moving. Pretty fast? Yeah. You like that? Thank you. Oh, great. This, is just, this is just the intermediate demo. There's a more fun demo. Um, so that's just that example. Um, you want to see a, another step? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. you want to see another demo? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes? yes. All right. Okay. So let me just slide these down for a sec. So um, my laptop, as you may be able to tell, is quite old and ghetto. <laughs> but I have actually a remote laptop, which is slightly faster. So I'm just going to actually use my remote laptop because um, it has more than four gigs of RAM. Uh, so I'm just going to SSH in. OK, so uh, do that. So what I've done in this remote laptop, um, I'm just going to start up MGMT. OK, oops. Go on now. OK. So, okay. so I'm going to start up MGMT, so it's running. 
And so I just now I'm going to run uh, the virtualist command. You can see there's one VM running. Okay, I'm just going to start up one in this case, and I'm actually just going to log into that uh, one machine. Is that big enough? Maybe I'll make it a little bigger. Console MGMT4. So MGMT is running, and my VM has started up. The password is also really stupid. And just to make this demo a little bit more appetizing, I'm going to type some scary kernel commands because the kernel likes to spit out all sorts of logs whenever something interesting happens, and that's not fun. So I'm just going to write these uh, sysctl to tell the kernel to not shut up. Um, you're welcome to try this at home with the kernel on full blabber mode. But um, okay, oops. No, no. I just need to. So if you're torrenting, please stop torrenting. There's the space that needs to be gone. OK, good. So um, so what I'm going to do is, um, so you remember the web UI thing that I showed you before? So I'm going to do actually something very similar. But instead of a web UI, I just made a really crappy um, CLI sort of tool. Um, and what it is, um, it's just a little shell script I made. And by pushing uh, the plus or minus key, I actually just can re generate a new graph. So instead of a slider that I slide, I just have a, a keyboard interface. Because it doesn't really matter. It's just any front end that you want. It can be a git commit if you like. Um, and to make this a little bit more interesting, so I'm on the right, you'll see the uh, virtual machine. And on the left, you just see this little shell front end. I'm going to run this LS CPU, and you can see that there's one virtual CPU on the machine. And just to make that a little bit more um, easier, I can grep uh, for CPUs, and we can run this in watch. So just so you can actually have a live view of how many CPUs are in this virtual machine, right? Because you all know you can have virtual machines with one CPU or 10 CPUs. And now, watch what happens when I so here's the count of CPUs right here. Watch what happens when I press this plus key. And you can actually see the CPU count going up. And if I push the minus key, you can see it going down. And it's actually quite quick. And you can see it. So what's actually happening is every time I push plus or minus, MGMT says, ooh, there's a new graph. The first graph said, give me one virtual CPU. The new graph said, give me four virtual CPUs. MGMT reloads that graph, notices that the virtual machine has the wrong number of CPUs, and then it runs, it works out the math and runs the CPU hot plug or hot unplug commands to actually change the number of CPUs on the running machine. Is that cool? Yeah. 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 Question, yeah. Which is the virtual machine identifier? When MGMT creates the resources, save the state locally in ATCD? Uh, so actually, nothing in etcd has been used for this okay. currently. So etcd is only used to do things between okay. MGMT instances, but locally everything is in its own graph. Okay. And the unique identifier is actually the, the virtual machine name. Okay. Yep. So uh, yeah, and so yeah, so you can actually just basically just edit the uh, the VM and change the CPU count. So if you were say some company that had a whole bunch of VMs and you had a whole bunch of load coming in that you wanted to process. You could just maybe dynamically scale up the number of uh, CPUs per machine uh, in you know, milliseconds. So um, this is one of those things that's possible. If you build these resources in MGMT, what you build and what the resources do is really up to you. So, uh, and here's one example. Uh, any quick questions about that? No? Do you like that or you hate that? Yeah. It's cool? All right. Um, so I'm just going to shut that down. I don't want to run this VM. So, um, so as I said, so the traditional kind of resources in MGMT are probably what you would expect, like Puppet. But we can also have these higher level resources like containers and so on. Uh, there's a password resource for doing some fancy password stuff. Uh, there's an Augeus resource. There's exec. There's a key value resource, which is brand new, and a whole bunch of other things. And uh, we're definitely looking for new resources. So if you want to actually write a new resource, uh, the core resources are all written in Golang, so please uh, send us a patch. Um, future work, so there's quite a lot of stuff that's coming. So the tool is really, I don't think, ready for production yet, and uh, we're trying to get there, but there's a lot of interesting things coming. So a few of those things, I showed you this stuff. Um, we don't have the language yet. 
So we're actually building a language, unfortunately. And the reason we want a language is to actually describe the different graphs that run on each machine. And the cool thing about that is we want to be able to describe our distributed systems, you know, our architectures, our, our server room, basically as code. But we want to do this in a way that's very simple to reason about and very powerful and very safe. And I think we have a way to do this. Uh, we're working on this. If you're into lectures and parsers and you like programming languages or functional programming, uh, please let me know. Uh, we're working on something called an FRP. Uh, new resources, if you want to help write a new resource, um, just please let me know. Uh, join the IRC channel. A whole bunch of other stuff coming too. And this is really a community tool. This is not a product. You cannot buy this right now. It's not a Red Hat product. It's just an upstream that we're building, which we think is going to be quite useful for a lot of uh, different things. So um, one of the things we're actually working on, so MGMT itself can actually be used as a library. So if you have an existing software project and you want to embed it in that software project to do that management stuff, um, we can actually do this. And I'm actually working on this. I recently joined the storage team at Red Hat uh, to help do this for GlusterFS uh, and potentially Ceph one day. So uh, nothing's uh, set in stone yet. We're still working on this. But the idea is to have MGMT inside of uh, GlusterD2 uh, or GlusterD3, whatever we call it, that does that sort of dynamic operation stuff for you. So if you wanted to add new machines to your cluster, you just spin up more machines and it automatically clusters. So that's coming. Um, if you want to be involved in that, just ping me. Uh, it's a really cool code base, and I think it's going to help system ins. Uh, the language I talked about, uh, that sort of stuff. This is really about you guys, right? I'm here because I like sharing material and sharing code, but it's all about you getting involved. Um, if we want MGMT to succeed, um, you will have to get involved and send patches because we're totally running it like an upstream. So how can you help? Uh, you can use this. You can test it. You can patch it. You can share it with your friends if you have Twitter or all those things. Uh, if you like writing docs, I think our docs are pretty good, but patches are always welcome. Uh, you can start on GitHub if you're into doing that sort of thing, show that you're interested. Write a blog post about playing with it, uh, tweeting, discuss it, and just hack on it, right? Hack about hacking on the tool, building what you want. Um, here's one marketing slide. Uh, Red Hat is kind enough to sponsor my work and keep paying me. So if you want to give them money, uh, you can. Uh, just ask somebody. Uh, they do a lot of good work. Uh, we have actually uh, two other Red Hat guys here as well. Niels is in the back. Uh, you can say hi. He works on Gluster and is a pretty smart guy, so talk to him. And just to be clear, this is an upstream community project. It's not a product, so if you want to get involved, please do. Uh, we'll just recap what we've done so far. I, recap. I don't know if you can hear the audio, but it's basically Arthur Benjamin just putting the cap back on his pen. It's a bad recap joke. Um, here's a few uh, links for you. Uh, you all know about the technical blog of James now, right? Yeah. There we go. So um, I published big articles about MGMT and stuff I'm working on. So if you want to check it in RSS, that's the way to go. There's the MGMT GitHub project. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, pretty easy to find. There's about six or so articles now about MGMT. So if you really want to see a lot more in depth and more details, uh, check this out. Also at the bottom of the project page, there's some existing conference talks that are recorded that show some different stuff that I might not have shown here today. And obviously you can find me, I'm Purple Idea on IRC and Twitter and GitHub and all that stuff. Um, so don't be shy if you have a question, you want help getting your first patch merged. Um, if you like this presentation, um, you have to do me a small favor. You need to take 10, 15, 20 seconds, find, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, Michele, Michele, I'm really bad at the Italian, sorry. Just go up to him and say, I really like this presentation or something like that. It'll be kind of like a distributed DOS attack and uh, bother him, sorry. Uh, and send me your feedback too. Um, again, if you want to participate in the project, come hang out on IRC. We got 50, 60, or sometimes even 70 people on the IRC channel on Freenode, so come hang out with us. We have a Twitter account, which you can use, and we have a mailing list. It's really, really low volume, where I send out announcements and new stuff in MGMT. So if you want to subscribe, uh, MGMT config list at redhat.com dash list. Uh, which you can check out as well. Let's see how much time we've got. Um, so I've got, what, 10 more minutes? Five, five minutes or four yeah. Five so what I'm going to do is I have um, a few more demos I can show you if you want, uh, or I can do lots of questions, but uh, I figured you might want maybe one more demo or so. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Demo. Demos? Um, which demo should we see? So do you want to see a remote execution demo? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's do that. This is a fun demo. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start up two virtual machines. 
this is kind of on my crappy laptop, so uh, let's, you know, just take a stable version. Um, this might take a quick moment. So uh, I'll just show you this bonus feature that I built in MGMT. I think it's pretty cool. So uh, and I have a slide, which I skipped over, which I can show you. OK, so um, let's suppose you have a data center. You got this great data center. Everything is beautifully set up with config management. And your like, pro DevOps management skills are like, at their best. And your whole data center goes on fire. And your boss is like, oh no. So he gives you the triple platinum card, and you buy a whole new data center. And you take your laptop, and you plug it in, and you just run some commands, and everything builds itself out from scratch. Whose data center does this right now? Raise your hand. There's some liars in the audience. <laughs> yeah, so this is generally something that would be ideal, right? Wouldn't that be nice if it was possible? Very nice. You guys are a shy audience. No, no, yeah. nice. It would be nice, right? So at some point, we need actually, um, we sometimes want to actually run something where you can run off as a temporary um, remote execution engine that goes off and starts running config management and then lets you take over and so on. Let me just start up, uh, this is booting up. So what we actually built in MGMT is actually a distributed system is a more general system than a centralized orchestrator. So what we can actually do is we can actually run MGMT off of one place, this initiator, like my laptop, and have it SSH over to a whole bunch of VMs. Um, and then what it does is it actually tunnels back through the SSH tunnel to that central machine that has running that etcd cluster. So the machines can actually exchange runtime information across machines. Then what we do is MGMT runs on each machine. They all converge together. And then as a cluster, they can all shut down. Everything is converged. Or you can just leave it running and have it take over the rest of your data center. Um, and I have a demo of this, if you want. I need to just set up one more VM. So, um, so what I'm going to do is, so I don't have DNS set up. So I'm going to do um, basically a very simple, oops. Um, I don't have uh, DNS set up, so I just have to set up the IP address manually. But I'm going to do the same thing I did in the previous demo. So what I'm going to do is each machine is going to push one file into this database, which is running over SSH, and it's going to pull down everything in the database. And instead of running them one at a time, I'm just going to run them both in parallel so you can see this run. And you have to just wait for the network here, my laptop. Who's got an old laptop like me? Anybody? X220s for the win? Old laptop culture. Um, and so what you can do is actually, you can run this SSH thing, uh, and uh, it'll converge. It copies over the binary, which is in Golang. So it's a single binary, which makes this a little easier as well. And just, uh, okay. So on the first machine, so on the first machine, there's nothing there. IP address is 99. Okay, is it finished? Almost done running. Great. So I boot up uh, two machines, and you can see the IP addresses are right here. Okay, I think we're ready to go. You ready? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to log in to the first machine. So on the left here, this is going to be MGMT running on my laptop. And on the right, I'm just going to show you the first of the two machines. It doesn't really matter which one because they're going to do the same thing. Uh, and you can see there's no files. There's a few files in temp, but nothing special. So I'm going to run this, and uh, it's going to start up. should do its thing. It's copying the MGMT thing over, and it's running. And then basically in a few seconds it's done. Now you can see file 1A and 2A and so on. So I can actually just cat those files. You can see what happened. And I'm going to run this in watch. And so what happened is basically they each put a file in the database. And then they each pulled down each other's files, right? So that happens back through SSH. Now here's the cool part. So I'm going to go here on my laptop. And I'm going to edit the, uh, con the configuration file of the second machine. Okay, so this is the config file, the graph of the second machine, but I'm watching on the right, the first machine. So if I go here and I say, hey, in control, 
control like this, and I save this file, when I hit enter, what's going to happen is MGMT is going to say, oh, I've got a new graph. Okay? It's going to take that graph, it's going to push it through the SSH tunnel to the second machine. The second machine is then it's going to say, oh, I have a new graph as well. So it's going to reload that graph, and in running that new graph, it notices that the thing in etcd needs to be updated. So it's going to update that in etcd, and now that first machine, again, watching etcd through SSH, is going to notice that something has changed, and it's going to pull that file down, and that's what we're watching here in real time. Okay? okay. Is that a bit confusing? No. no. Okay? So are you ready? I'm going to run it. I'm going to press enter, and it's done. Okay? So it happens really, really, really quickly, really, really efficiently. So, um, and you know, you can change it to whatever. Um, hey, you know, whatever you like. And uh, so this is kind of like live hacking, right? Imagine you have your configuration open, you're running continuously on your infrastructure, changing the config. You probably don't want to do this in production unless you're very, very brave. But if you are testing, this might be something that's very useful um, or just for deploying brand new data centers. Um, so this is the first example. Um, just to show you actually, if I just, um, if I actually just kill it and shut it down, I can actually run it with this converged, remember I did the converged timeout in that first example, that when the graph was converged, it shut down. I can do the converged timeout, oops, if I can spell, equals five, and here I'm timing the whole operation. So I'll just run it, it starts up, all the machines, when they're all converged together, then it will shut down, five seconds go by, and you'll see the whole thing converged in about two seconds, uh, seven total with the five seconds of wait. So um, this is if you just want to do a one-shot run and then shut down. Um, there's another thing that's not built yet, but that might come in the future if you want to write the patch. So if you wanted to do a hierarchical version of this, where the first machine, the first laptop SSHs into machine one, and then from there you split out and sort of in a tree structure, you could actually do this um, both if you wanted to really just blast a whole data center really quickly in one shot, or imagine over here you're in a coffee shop with shitty Wi-Fi and the first machine is in your data center. So you could actually SSH into that data center machine first and then from there go out and on the fast network, you know, go through your whole data center and do some change. So that's something that uh, would be quite easy to add to this design. Um, so I think I have maybe two minutes for questions. Thank you.